Welcome to the RimWorld mod rundown. We'll be taking a quick look at what you can expect to see from Vanilla Faction's expanded Empire. For starters, you'll need to own the Royalty DLC and download the additional workshop content, Vanilla Expanded Framework and Harmony. Whilst not required, Empire also benefits from using Vanilla Persona Weapons Expanded for more adequate Royal Weapons and Psycast Expanded due to the nature of earning Psylinks from titles. Let's open with saying, this mod is freaking huge. I've got a lot of people requesting deserters, but as that requires Empire Expanded to function, we're going to cover this first. You're going to need to eat your main before you're allowed your dessert. Errs. Empire Expanded comes with a total revamp of the Empire faction, as well as introducing the deserter sub-faction, with their related terrorism actions. It adds new noble interactions, new noble requirements, new structures, new items, an additional persona weapon, totally revamps all of the royal titles, generates a royal hierarchy, overhauls permits, adds an entirely new vassalage system, allows you to give pawns titles, adds new noble related quests, gives access to a new storyteller, and finally a new starting scenario. And breathe. This is probably one of the most extensive mods I've had to cover so far so I've thrown on some quality of life mods for my own sanity while playing to get the footage, and I'll do my best to include relevant clips when possible. But completing a full run to ascend the Great Hierarchy takes dozens of hours. For this run alone, I recorded 71 gig of video, and that doesn't even begin to scratch the surface of an actual royal colony. As an endgame goal, this is probably up there with doing the Arca Nexus in terms of a time investment, with both of them suffering the same risk of you're going to need an extremely expensive colony to achieve this. As such, the video in the background of this rundown is far closer to just showing an initial playthrough with Empire enabled and trying to earn royal titles. I just can't invest the time to run a colony for that long, and dev moding the entire thing creates a really slanted view of what the mod offers on a legitimate run. Okay then, let's break this all down bit by bit and work our way through what's contained. Firstly, the deserters. Now, the version that you'll have with just Empire installed isn't the fully fledged deserter faction. You can still fight and interact with them, but you won't be able to properly side with them. Yet. Faction Expanded Deserters does that, and we'll cover that next time. Deserters become a thorn in your side once you've started to earn royal titles on colonists, and they exist to undermine your quest of ascension. They won't bother your colony if you just run Empire Expanded and never take a royal title. You can still earn as much honour as you want from quests, that's fine. Just don't bestow an actual rank on any of your pawns or these guys will want you dead. As well as outright attacking you at times, deserters also perform acts of terrorism around your base. Sometimes more successfully than others. Deserters try and disguise themselves with friendly or neutral caravans and visitors like crowd blending from Assassin's Creed. Whilst you can determine that there's a deserter in the group, their travelling companions don't take kindly to you shooting them on sight, meaning you need to wait for the caravan to leave so you can deal with the troublemaker that stays behind. Side note, in the six hours of playtime for the colony, I had absolutely zero terrorism events happen. Hooray! If you don't deal with the deserter, you can expect a few different acts to be committed. You won't receive any kind of notification about these events, no big red flashing warning, no text bubble at the top left of the screen. Either you see it, or you'll discover the consequences. Deserters can place bombs in the home area, which you'll be able to see and hear, as they emit a pretty steady beat, allowing you to defuse them before they go off. They are equal to an anti-grain explosion, so not normally something you want to leave to go off in your base. They can also attempt to poison your food supply, which will cause a nasty infection to any pawn that happens to consume the meal from that stack. Food which has been poisoned will show that it's listed as an ingredient. Nice work, 47. This then allows you to safely discard it. And finally, deserters can try a good old fashioned assassination attempt. They'll find your highest ranking pawn and just attempt to murder them. That's why you want your nobles walking around ready for combat at all times. As snazzy as the royal robes may look, they don't do much against full metal jackets. The next bits are nice and easy to cover before we dig a little deeper. So we've got the storyteller and the scenario. The storyteller, 
Ariadne Archduchess, behaves even more predictably than Cassandra, with blue, white and yellow events occurring as normal, but red events only pop every time the colony wealth increases by 5k. What does this normally end up meaning? Well, you open a particularly rich ancient danger, three red events. You harvest your field of Devil Strand, two red events. You deal with one red event raid and allow all of the loot and bodies afterwards, another red event pops. It's a nice idea in theory as it really forces you into playing with wealth management in mind. The only issue comes from certain items that can break 5k by themselves, and once you get into the late game with huge raids, you just keep feeding it wealth to trigger. The new family start is one of the harder scenarios designed. You're given a single pawn with a rank of Baron and dropped into essentially a war zone. Your family home is being ransacked by deserters, looking to destroy or steal as much as possible. This start is made more difficult by the following things. If you do manage to survive the deserters, either by killing them or waiting them out, you still have an insane amount of wealth on that tile. If you abandon that tile to move somewhere else a little more subtle, you do still have a very high value pawn and you will be attracting attention from the deserters from day one. It's definitely a starting choice. Maybe give it a shot once and then rock and roll as normal when aiming for royal titles. So let's just get into the meat and potatoes of this mod then, seeing as some of my previous rundowns were the length of just these few additions and we barely scratched the surface yet. The biggest change is obviously the Great Hierarchy, which allows you to access all of the royal related content in one easy menu. If you don't have any royals in your colony, this is all hidden by default. In this UI you'll find all of the pawns in your world which are currently sitting at each title, with Freeholders, Yeomen, Acolytes, Knights, Praetors, Barons, Counts, Archcounts, Marquess, Dukes, Archdukes, Consuls, Magisters, Despots, Stellarchs and the High Stellarch all generated and available to interact with. If you feel like throwing a fancy party, you can invite some guests manually via this menu and potentially score yourself some honour. As a quite important aside, if you are using Prepare carefully, first off, don't. Secondly, mods that include a lot of pawn generation like this that need to be stored in world pawn data will absolutely experience issues if you are using Prepare carefully. Consider this a PSA. Prepare carefully is a game breaking mod that will inevitably cause your ticks to stagnate and cannot be removed without risking grey screen issues on colonies that were created when it was installed. If you want a mod to replace it, use character editor instead. A lot of people still use prepare carefully because it's in everyone's YouTube video of top 10 mods for RimWorld. It's been broken for a long time and it causes irreversible damage to colonies that run for more than 2 or 3 years. I've had ticks drop below 60 when I was using Prepare Carefully. This means that the speed buttons at the bottom did absolutely nothing, which makes any late game colony become an absolute chore to manage. Save yourself the pain. Bin it. Anyway, sorry, Empire Expanded. It gives you access to the revamped permit system, which is vastly expanded from the original system introduced in base game royalty. You have resource drops for gold, plasteel, jade, uranium, wood, stone, cloth, synthread, devil strand and hyperweave. Manufacture drops for herbal meds, medicine, chemfuel, components, advanced components, shells and lavish meals. Combat drops for striker turrets, a shield, an arm shuttle and an orbital beacon. And unit drops for troopers, janissaries, cataphracts, stellar guards, tech fries, absolvers, labourers and a full imperial regiment. Basically, if you want it, chances are you can call it in. As with the original permit system, calling in a drop activates a large cooldown for that specific request, which can be bypassed by spending honour. The amount is generally determined by how impactful or strong the permit is. This means if you have a lot of combat support permits, you could call them in all at once for a simply massive strike force, or use them bit by bit. So you've always got some Imperial soldiers to soak the initial damage when a raid occurs. The next UI feature is Vassals. They are reserved for only the highest ranking members of the hierarchy and don't become available until you have a Marquis. 
you'll be able to choose an Imperial settlement to vassalize and gain the tithe reward as shown, including choices of honor, silver, gold, wood, steel, food or slaves, with some settlements also gaining a bonus or a penalty to collection speed, potentially further increasing the reward granted by holding ownership over that settlement. This allows the player to collect a trickle of income for certain resources delivered to the base regularly, like gold, which is super useful to build a lot of the late game royalty room requirements. The last feature in this UI is honours. If you've ever wanted to be known as the Imperishable, the King of Kings, Lord of the Earth, Monarch of the Sky, Ruler of the Four Horizons or any of that old bollocks, this is for you. Some quests for the Empire will allow you to pick titles as rewards, which can then be bestowed upon your nobles for the associated bonus using this menu. Titles can improve opinions, generate additional honour, improve tithe collection speed, boost trade prices, increase mood, or stop certain skills from decaying. You aren't limited to a single title either. You can go full Pokemon and try and catch them all on a single royal. Okay, that's the UI covered. I'd imagine that most of you know about Honor by now, but a quick rundown if you don't. In base game, Honor is a potential reward from quests given to you by the Empire, or it can be obtained by giving slaves and valuables to Imperial traders that visit about once a year. Whilst these methods still exist in Expanded, you now have a few additional options too. There are more quests to undertake for Honor to start with. You have noble visits, art exhibitions, grand balls, destroying deserter hideouts, you're given a new ritual for high-ranking nobles, a royal address, which earns more honour for each pawn participating who also has a title, unless it goes badly, in which case you lose honour instead. You also have royal gossip, which just happens passively around the colony between noble pawns. This is why you want at least two nobles in your colony as soon as possible, preferably with a very high opinion of each other to keep the gossip positive. All gossip interactions will either gain or lose one honour depending on the attitudes of the pawns involved. This allows you to, hopefully anyway, creep your way up the hierarchy a little sooner and passively earn some honour every day just from a little bit of socialisation. As there are also so many new noble titles, you've also got a lot of new noble rooms to go with them as well as the requirements for a throne room, an impressive bedroom, specific clothing and nicer meals, you'll now be expected to provide a ballroom, which is a large, near-empty room with a musical instrument. After all, fancy balls need some room to breathe. You'll also need to build a gallery, a room filled with your finest sculptures commemorating the moment when Skunk got food poisoning on the 5th of April May, expressed via strange geometric shapes in a romantic style. And finally, you'll have a requirement for a royal court. Your nobility aren't happy unless they have other nobles that they can sneer at the common folk with. So the higher pawns climb up the hierarchy, the more nobles you'll need below them to work as hype men, walking around chanting their name, carrying out strange processions, praising them like a deity, behaving like a totally normal country that isn't at all fucking bizarre. I think that about covers most of the hierarchy bits, so onto the new stuff. You have a whole bunch of new furniture and decorations which will be required by your nobles to advance and keep them happy at certain ranks. Steles, slabs, sculptures, candelabras, rugs, banners, mirrors, chairs, tables, thrones, all extremely expensive to build. So you'll need to keep finding new ways of getting your hands on gold and a simply massive amount of resources for all of the fine floor you're going to need. You'll also have a new musical instrument, an enormous pipe organ, complete with gold inlay. There are also unique items that appear with your permit requests, striker turrets or armoured shuttles, that land with a mounted cannon to support disembarking troops. To go with these additions, shuttles have also been retextured to be more in line with a royal vessel. For new gear, you have a stellic robe, only the finest for the tippy top of the royal totem pole, and a tech fryer crown, which looks like somebody welded a tech print to a helmet and called it done. It improves the research rate and basically makes the wearer only ever stop researching to eat, giving them recreation and rest while they're performing a research task. You have the absolver armor with the accompanying helm, which improves stats related to ranged combat like accuracy, stealth and speed. 
It also has the useful benefit of leaving the outer layer free, so you could also wear a cape, robe or any additional armour if you somehow manage to get your hands on Absolver gear. Deserter armour is obviously included, which functions like a modified cataphract suit, providing slightly less protection, but improving psychic sensitivity and ranged accuracy, as well as looking absolutely dope. Janissary gear is designed more towards hostile environments, providing total toxic immunity while offering less ballistic protection for the body, only covering the shoulders and torso, but taking only the outer layer, unlike most other late game armour options. You also have some new weapons, one of which is a uh, little nuts. The Fletcher is an unlimited range acid based sniper rifle. It does only appear on Absolvers who usually come in with a death acidifier as standard, so getting your hands on one of these is exceedingly rare. The initial shot doesn't do a great deal, but each bullet is carrying a payload of tissue dissolving acid that disperses through the target's body and causes severe damage over time. This thing will legitimately let you take out a raid from the other side of the map, barring any solid walls or obstructions. You only need a shot or two to land per target, the acid does the rest. What you're more likely to get your hands on is a tox blade, which is coated in the same acid that the Fletcher uses, with its burn effect not lasting quite as long as the rounds from the rifle. Whilst getting into melee to apply a dot and then having to stand around awkwardly waiting for it to do its job isn't ideal, they're a solid little weapon for any aspiring brawler. The acid burns cause extreme amounts of pain shock, so you'll likely drop enemies pretty fast. If you're using vanilla Persona weapons expanded, these can also benefit from that mod's changes, adding in additional customization choices and effects. The Charge Thumper is part shotgun, part siege engine, all badass. A ranged weapon that deals siege damage is always a welcome addition, absolutely devastating against highly armoured targets and structures alike. Obviously let down by its range, you wouldn't want an army of pawns carrying these as you'll be gunned down before getting into a position to be able to fire. You also need to deal with the small issue of scatter and the nature of the splash damage that these weapons seem to output. Whilst they aren't exactly firing grenades, you're definitely going to find a chain shotgun more reliable in tight corridors, as any misses with the charge thumper will likely bring down your own walls. And finally, to end all of this, we have Aperitif. Wait, I've clearly done this the wrong way around. It's a new consumable that allows you to deplete a pawn's entire hunger bar. Why, you ask? For more food buffs, of course. It also helps with removing stomach-related maladies, like infections, food poisoning, or gut worms. You'll be delivered some Aperitif every time you do something for the Empire as a small thank you, or to aid in your celebrations. And there we are. Without a doubt, one of the biggest mods I've had to cover. And I've still got the Alpha series to come. Whew, lordy. Keep an eye out for the Deserters video soon to follow up on this, as well as coverage of Vanilla Persona Weapons Expanded. I've moved a few bits around in the schedule so that the videos I had planned to do, that are also being requested, will hopefully be out sooner rather than later. I am taking new mod recommendations into consideration, don't think I'm ignoring them, I just need a little bit of time to make the algorithm do its thing so I can hit the numbers to get YouTube started for real. VE mods are a big help with that, you know how this is. Thanks for watching folks! If you have any mods you'd like to see a full breakdown for, or suggestions of mods you'd like to see covered, feel free to leave them in the comments, I might get around to them. I'll be back again soon with another RimWorld mod rundown. Wherever you are in the world, enjoy the rest of your morning, afternoon or evening. Take care.